Let's go to questions. Cool. We do questions. Sick. First one is, not that I personally feel this way, but do you think evolutionarily that the reason why the women didn't go to war is because if one man survived, he could repopulate his whole country or tribe, versus if all the women went out and died and one came back, they could only reproduce one person for the tribe? Do I think that? I don't know. I think one of the problems with evolutionary psychology is that you, a lot of different stories can be told to explain things. It's kind of like the Aesop's fables, like how did the tortoise get its shell? And there's this long story that totally plausible, but obviously isn't, <laughs> isn't the case. It's like he kept get hitting on the head and that was why he did you know, whatever. Uh, is that plausible? Sure. I think also, um, I mean, let's take a step back. The difference between men and women at the most basic level is that men, ha men have tons of fast, cheap gametes, sperm, and women have slow, basically immobile, expensive ones. And that all of the musculature that we have developed and all of the social structures that have developed around that are for high-risk, powerful men and more secure women. And it's because literally their eggs are just more expensive. So we throw out, yeah, I guess, I think this, this does sort of track our cheap sperm because one guy can just come back and do it. Also, they have the musculature which supports that, so they would be better in war than women. Sounds plausible. Yeah, my answer is maybe, but I want to actually just circle back to what you said. I've I've seen a lot of people lean really hard on evolutionary psychology, mm -hmm. and it is speculative at best, mm -hmm. and it sounds nice, but it's not necessarily a reliable description of anything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm sure it's right, and sometimes I'm sure it's wrong. So I'm just generally... I think, I think evolutionary psychology is interesting, but I wouldn't necessarily make any life decisions based on what someone told me about evolutionary psychology. Mm -hmm. It is, I guess, if you take away all the other things and you assume that, which I think is true, that all of the, the height differences and the muscular differences originated from differences in gametes and that those were strategies that separated them. And you just stop thinking about people and start thinking about gametes. That story, though, does sound plausible. It's just like, you get one of these new babies every nine months or one year at max. I get a million every time. <laughs> you know, so it seems which of these do, would we want to be riskier with? We'll be riskier with the cheap ones than with the expensive ones. Sure, but I'm going to say something that's totally not true. But you could imagine <laughs> someone saying, well, evolutionarily, because of the gametes, men have higher testosterone. And men, because of higher testosterone, men are more aggressive. And so when it comes to wars, they actually used to ask for volunteers and the men would volunteer because they loved violence because of their testosterone, because evolutionarily they're designed for, for violence. I think, like, well, that, that also is kind of the same story that I told, which is like the testosterone is a byproduct of cheap. Gametes. Sure, sure. But I'm just, so I'm saying we know, we know historically that men would go to war and win more. And then the reason why is we could just guess at basically. Yeah. Yes. No, your point is, is well taken is that if you know what happens and you know a couple of things to draw a line between them, you can draw that several different ways. And you always get to the same conclusion, yeah, which yeah. is that we historically sent men to war. So yes. it's like, you know, the answer already. Yeah. No, good science <laughs> involves a prediction of an unknown is what, you yes. know what I mean? It, sh it should predict something. Uh, and that's the test of if a theory is well-founded or not, not that it can explain past events. Cause you know, you can explain the theory of gravity with uh, invisible angels pulling you back to earth because you're not yet ready to go to heaven. And that explains it perfectly. And they always move at the same speed, independent of, uh, or it's, what is it? Is it independent of mass? No, it's related to mass. I don't know. I think things fall at the same speed minus wind resistance. doesn't matter. <laughs> it's been a long time since 11th grade. Um, next question. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.